Hey guys, welcome back to the third part of my math calculator section walkthrough. If you haven't seen the first two parts, you can go back and watch those. Before we get into things, this video is sponsored by Prep Scholar, with their test bank of literally thousands of questions and in-depth videos going over every concept you need for the SAT. They are hands down my favorite paid resource for the SAT. They were one of the reasons I was able to score a 1600. I get a lot of the tips that I share on my channel directly from their program. So if you're looking for that extra motivation or extra content out there about the digital SAT, check out the links in the description below for $50 off their SAT or ACT program, or check out their new tutoring services that they offer. All right, let's get into it. All right, in the XY plane, if zero zero is the solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between A and B must be true. Oh boy, so here we have another one where we might not really know where to start, but I would suggest starting with this value, 0, 0, that they give us, because we know that that is a solution to both of these. So that, remember, 0, 0 means x equals 0 and y equals 0. If we replace 0 for x and 0 for y, let's see what we get. We can simplify these to 0 less than a and 0 is greater than b. So if we draw this on a little number line, a is greater than 0, and b is less than zero. Okay, now let's look at our answer choices. From this, we know that b is never gonna be greater than a because b is always gonna be negative, a is always gonna be positive. But that does mean that a is always gonna be greater than b. So we know a is probably the right choice. But let's just look at the other two. We don't know that a necessarily equals negative b. That's not like a given because we only know that a is greater than b here. It might help to rewrite them like this as well. And for the absolute value things, we also can't really say anything about that because absolute value, remember, makes this negative b value into its positive equivalent. So like we don't know if this would be true or not. So yep, a is our answer for this one. And for checking it, I would just make sure to draw maybe a number line like this one or plug in zero, zero again. Maybe you can try solving it in a different way, though I think that'd probably be a little more difficult in this case. Now we have a word problem where we're trying to make a system of equations. So food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was this amount. How many salads were sold that day? So these can get a little tricky, especially if you're not used to just creating these equations out of thin air. But in general, we're gonna have like one equation equal to the total cost and one equal to like total amount of things. So that's what we're aiming for given this information. And maybe these two things will vary based on the question, but it's usually like the number of something, like total number and total revenue or maybe like total pages turned or like something weird like that. Let's first do the simpler equation, the total number of things. We know a total of 209 salads and drinks were sold in one day. Now I'm gonna use the variable G for greens to represent salads and D for drinks because S kind of gets confusing, looks a lot like a five and we don't wanna get ourselves more confused than we need. So we can just say G plus D equals 209. The total salads and drinks added up is 209. That's our first equation. Then our second one, we know the total revenue for the day is gonna be this. And then we know salads sell for 650 each. So 650 G plus $2 for each drink. And there we go. That equals our total revenue for the day. So those are our two equations. Now we just have to solve them. And you guys know I love using elimination. Honestly, in this case, substitution might be easier, but we could also just multiply this equation by a negative two to get that negative 2D and positive 2D to cancel out. Then that would leave us with the number of salads, which is what we want. Here's where our calculator comes in real handy because I'm not gonna do that mental math. I'm gonna mess it up. So two times 209, that's gonna be 418. So, so negative 418 equals negative 2G minus 2d. That's this equation rewritten. And then this one stays the same. All right, so these two cancel out. Then we wanna do this minus this. So we get 418.5 equals, and then 6.5 minus two is 4.5g. Then divide the whole thing by 4.5, and we get 93 salads. Yay, I love that. It's a nice, easy number. Um, so that probably is a good sign, but they're also pretty tricky with these. And sometimes a lot of these will be the answers to just wrong setups or solving for the wrong variable. So you really got to check yourself for these problems. You could just solve for D as well and then plug in those values. See if you can get that total number and the total number of salads. So like D, we can just do, just do it real fast. 209 minus 93 is gonna be how many drinks we have sold. So we sold 116 drinks in the day. So if we do 6.5 times 93 salads plus two times 116 drinks, um, that should equal this number right here. And yep, look at that. If you don't feel like doing it that way, you can solve the other method, but that's probably harder. 
Both are good ways to check yourself though. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? So this is a lot of transactions to think about. They kind of load a lot of information off on us here. So we're looking for the original price in terms of P. So we'll say like X times P. So just remember at the end, we're looking for O, not P. So if there was a 20% discount off its original price, O, that would look like it's 0.8 times the original price is going to be the amount without sales tax. She also paid an 8% sales tax on this discounted price. So we would also have to multiply 1.08 because that's going to add to the price. So this is not a zero, by the way. That's a confusing variable to use. So this is the amount that she paid to the cashier. So if we want to solve for this O right here, the original price, we need to divide both sides by 0.8 and 1.08. And that's where the most common mistake for this one probably is. That's going to be our original price in terms of P. Because if you didn't pay close attention to what the P actually represents, you could easily think that the P was this original price right here, which it's not. So our answer here is actually D. And to check this one, just make sure it makes sense in a real life context. So if you buy a computer, the original price is O, you get a discount on it, then you get 8% sales tax multiplied onto that. That's the amount you pay at the cash register, P. And then dividing that, we get back to the original price. We can even plug in a value like 100, just to see it at work. So if P was the price paid at the cash register, our original price would be 115. And it would make sense that it would be a little bit discounted because of that 20% off discount. So that makes sense. Now we've got dreams are called during one week. The data in the table above were produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes. Group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? So this is kind of like a reversal of the type question we were doing before with these tables. We're taking the group that recalled at least one dream of all of the participants. So, so we can just look at the totals here. So we want to add up this number and that number because that's the amount who recalled at least one dream. That's going to be the pool that we draw from. 39 plus 125. Calculator time. That's 164, and that's looking promising because we already have that in our denominator there. So that's the total who were called at least one dream, right? And then what's the probability that the person belonged to group Y who you take out of this? So all the group Y participants in this category are going to be these two. So 11 plus 68, that's probably 79. Let's just make sure we're not crazy here. Yep. So our answer for this one, the probability of a person being from group Y, if you pick from one or more dreams, is going to be 79 over 164. And again, these ones are a little harder to check yourself on, but just make sure you're taking from the right pool of total and picking the right subgroups out of that total for your numerator and denominator. So we've got another two-parter here. This one's just a big table with annual budget data for different programs in Kansas. So which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agricultural and natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010? So there's a lot going on here in that little short paragraph. Sometimes they're really wordy with things, sometimes they cram a lot in. So we're looking specifically at agricultural and natural resources from the years 2008 to 2010 only. And then we're looking for the average rate of change, which they don't give us in this case. We kind of have to calculate that ourselves given the table data. So for rate of change, we can just take like the final minus the initial value and divide that by the amount in between these two values. So like time elapsed. Don't know if that's the best notation for that. There are definitely like better equations for that online, but you know. So our time difference in this case would be 2010 minus 2008 or two years. So over two years, this is gonna be like budget change per year is like the format of this. So we can just take the final budget minus the initial budget. So 488106 minus 358708 and then divide that by two years because that's how much time is between the two. You might notice me doing these calculations in separate parts on my calculator, like instead of cramming it all into one line. And I just do this for my own sanity because you don't want to mess up just because you type something in wrong on the calculator. So I kind of like doing it in steps like this. It's not the fastest thing, but it, it works for me. So we got an answer close to like 65,000. 
and that's not close to these but remember that these budgets are in thousands of dollars if we tack on an extra thousand at the end of this we see that b is our answer now which program's ratio of its 2007 to 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program's ratio of the 2007 to 2010 budget that's probably a good value to get first so we're looking for 2007 divided by 2010 so that ratio between 2007 and 2010 is going to be 0.68 ish for hr um so now let's just compare so we can try Dividing that by that, same for education and highways and transportation. For agriculture, it's closer to 0.77, so that's probably not right. For this one, it's a little bit closer, it's 0.72. Um, highways and transportation, geez, that's 0.82, probably public safety. So that is 0.57. So I don't love the difference between these two, but it definitely is the closest. But definitely if there's that much of a difference, I would make sure to double check yourself. It's easy to type stuff wrong in your calculator. Another simpler way to do these is just to take the pure estimates. So like for our HR budget, we can just do four over six because like we don't really care about any, this is a lot of sig figs for no reason. So we take four over six for human resources, that's about two thirds. Then all the rest of these, public safety is gonna be close to three fifths or about 0.6, which is pretty close to that. Education is going to be two-thirds, which makes sense because that's the one we said was the closest. And agricultural slash natural resources is going to be like four or five, which is 0.8. So yeah, these two definitely match up the closest, especially if you do the little estimation like this. So I'd say that's our answer. That's it for the third part of my walkthrough on the math calculator section. Stay tuned next week for the fourth part. Until then, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.